Hi there, I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I offer this devotion as a, as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit and for the soul. And it's titled, Coming Home to Mother Nurture. Mothering Sunday or, or Mother's Day as it's come to to be known these days means many different things to so many different people. For most of us, it's, it's a day of joy, a day set aside to celebrate the gift of motherhood. That said, this is not the case for everyone. For some of us, it will be a day tinged with sadness as we remember the mums, the mothers that we have lost, who are no longer with us. For some mothers, it's a time to remember lost children either through irreconcilable differences or death's dark shadow. Two of my aunts are experiencing their first mothering Sundays without their ch with one of their children, one their only child, and I know many others touched with this sadness, some very close to home. So let's think of those mothers. Let's pause and think of those mothers who have lost their children. Let's also remember the mothers whose children are far away and who worry about them every day. Let's think of those who have never born children or ever experienced that gift due to a variety of circumstances. Sometimes it can be a painful day for them. But let's think also finally for those who, for whatever reasons, find our relationships with our mothers or with our own children. Let's think of those who find that difficult who today may, for who Mother's Day may bring up painful and very difficult emotions and feelings. So let's pause before I continue with this devotion. Let's pause just for a moment or two and hold those, for who, those that we know, and those in our world for whom Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday can, can be difficult. Mother's Day and Mothering Sunday has a very long history, you know. In some ways, it dates back to the time of ancient Greece or Rome. Mothers were celebrated in ancient times too, days set aside to celebrate mother. It's not merely, as some would suggest, a creation of the greeting cards companies just to make money out of us. The celebration of mother and motherhood has been with us for many, many centuries. In Britain, Mothering Sunday was about returning home, children working away, or returning to the Mother Church. It wasn't really about the mothers as we understand it today, not in the same way anyway. And in these, this days, Mothering Sunday, in, in the UK at least, has now become known as Mother's Day, which, is, which follows the American tradition that's actually celebrated in May, and not that this middle Sunday of Lent as it is in the United Kingdom. And even the American Mother's Day, though, to some degree, was about, about returning home, about bringing healing and wholeness on, on Mother's Day. So whatever its true, or, true origins, Mothering Sunday or, or Mother's Day is enshrined in this image of returning home and this sense of belonging to something more than just ourselves. Whether that is actually of children returning to the family home, having worked away, or of people returning to the mother church, or, or returning to a place of love and acceptance. Whatever it's about, if it's about returning to a place of safety, it's about returning home to a place of renewal, of rebirth, not only for ourselves, but for others too. It's about returning to a place of love and total acceptance of who we are, exactly as we are, no matter what we have done or where we have been. It's a day about being accepted with open, loving arms, enshrined really in those images of returning home. It's about coming home to love, really, a return to love. It brings to mind uh, some wonderful words attributed to the, the, the Sufi poet, mystic Rumi. Come, come, whoever you are, Wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair, 
Come, even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, come yet again. Come, come. And with the idea of joining us on that journey together, this ever-moving, turning and returning journey. When we return home to the loving arms of our idealised mothers, we are returning to a place of total acceptance. It doesn't matter where we have been or what we have done. The love is there. The total acceptance is there. This is this image of the Divine Mother, I think. It's also the, an image of the idealised religious or spiritual community, actually. It's kind of what that, that kingdom of love, kingdom of God, ought to look like. What that commonwealth of love is meant to be like. It's the image of the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter returning to the loving arms of mother community, totally accepted as they are and ready to begin again on that journey in that caravan of love. Every woman, every man, join the caravan of love. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Everybody take a stand. Join the caravan of love. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I'm your brother, I'm your brother. She's your sister. Every woman, every man, join the caravan of love. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Come, come, whoever you are, Wherever you have been, come and join us. This is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, come again, come again, come again in love. Brings to mind, actually, some rather beautiful words of a, of a wonderful redemptive prayer, really, I, I heard many, many years ago. I, I don't even know who wrote this, actually. It goes something like this. We forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love for remaining silent when a single voice would have made a difference we forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love for each time that our fears have made us rigid and inaccessible we forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love for each time that we have struck out in anger without just cause we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For each time that our greed has blinded us to the needs of others, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For the selfishness which sets us apart and alone, we forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. For falling short of the admonitions of the Spirit, we forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love for losing sight of our unity we forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love for these and so and for so many acts both evident and subtle which have fueled the illusion of separateness we forgive ourselves and each other we begin again in love we begin again in love Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, come again in love. When I think of motherhood and or mother church, I think of returning to a place of sustenance, of nurture, where one feels that they can recharge and renew in safety. A place where you're accepted wholly as you are. And from this place, you can begin again in love. You can, if you like, be born again, be given birth to once more, or many times more, actually. Even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, you can begin again in love. Colombian author Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote, In love in the time of cholera, human beings are not born once and for all on the day their mothers give birth to them, but life obliges them over and over again to give birth to themselves. Come again, come. We can begin again a thousand times if we need to. We can turn down a new path or we can return home to the very beginning. It's okay, you know, it's okay. And 
And it's here where the association with Mothering Sunday and this idea of returning to Mother Church is here where it's found, really. And I believe this is the purpose of, of free spiritual and religious communities, Unitarian communities, I guess. The play, that's the purpose of them, I would say, that welcomes the traveller home to the loving arms of, of a mother community. A place of total acceptance wherever a person has been. Not a place merely of tolerance, because I don't think tolerance is enough, you know. A place of acceptance where you can come as you are, exactly as you are in this moment. A place of loving nurture where you can either continue, or if need be, begin again in love. Even if you've broken your vows a thousand times, you can come again, come. You can begin again in love. The purpose of the, kind of the communities I serve is to nurture one's spirit, to each other's spirit, actually. The, our purpose is to nurture that love that's present deep within the souls of every one of us, to nurture and develop these qualities in each other. And it's not just the responsibility of a mother to do that. Every person in this earth has nurturing qualities. We can bring the best from one another. We can help at least. We can offer one another unconditional love. We say here, come, you all are welcome here. And that, but that's, a, that's an active thing. It's not just something to be said. It's not just merely words. To love each other unconditionally is to love as a mother loves her only child. Easier said than done, I know. And for those of us who have been hurt by those who were supposed to love us, to offer us love unconditionally, that's very hard to do. So before we can offer that love to others, we must first of all become reconciled with our own pain and our own suffering. And again, I believe this is one of the purpose of a truly free religious community, to offer a safe, secure place where one can come to terms with, with themselves and their lives. Security and protection are, as much, are nurturing qualities, they really are. And the qualities that are needed for a spiritual community to develop. The whole point of them. To develop ourselves and our souls. To be who we are. To become who we are. Not, not just to come here as we are. But to create all that we can be. The purpose of such beloved communities. To create an environment that is secure enough to enable each of us to explore in a safe and secure space. A welcoming space. A loving space. So on this day set aside to honour mothers, let's remember those who have offered us the unconditional and wholly accepting love of the mother ideal. Those who have offered their unquestioning love to us, even when we've broken our vows a thousand times. Those who have offered their nurturing hearts and encouraged us to begin again in love. I can think of so many people in my life that have done that to me, being with some of them very recently. Male, but some real strong female characters too. Let's also commit to living this way ourselves, to offer this love to all that we meet, this nurturing spirit, to not just tolerate the people that we meet as they are, but to love them and to fully accept them, even if they've broken their vows a thousand times. Let's offer to them the nurturing hand of love. Let's, let, let's begin again in love. And let's invite the other to begin again in this spirit of love. So I invite us just to join together in prayer. A prayer for all who mother. Let us pray. We reflect in thanksgiving this day for all those whose lives have nurtured ours. The life-giving ones who heal with their presence. Who listen in sympathy. Who give wise advice but only when asked for it. We are grateful for all those who have mothered us, who have held us gently in times of sorrow, who have celebrated with us our triumphs no matter how small, who noticed when we changed and grew, who praised us for taking risks, who took genuine pride in our success, and who expressed genuine, genuine compassion when we did not succeed. On this day that honour mothers, let us honour all mothers men and women alike, who from somewhere in their being have freely and wholeheartedly given life and sustenance and vision to us. Dear God, Mother, Father of us all, grant us life-giving ways, strength for birthing and a nurturing spirit 
that we may take attentive care of our world, our communities and those precious beings entrusted to us by biology or by destiny or by friendship, fellowship or fate. Give us a heart of a mother today. Amen. I'm going to end now with some final words of blessing. You know, we need to bless more. and We can all bless. We bless when we give ourselves wholeheartedly to life. So hold on to what is good, even if it's just a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it's a tree which stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it's a long way from here. Hold on to my hand, even when I've gone away from you. Hold on to each other and to faith and to hope and love. Even just these three things will see us through. And may the love of God hold us and sustain us in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do.